This is, uh, this is our wonderful senior portfolio class, but this is a special edition. We have Mackenzie Smith, we have Joy Ludwig, and we have Dora Dwan. Uh, these are three alumni who I feel like they just graduated. I don't know. Dora, when did you graduate? Last fall. You graduated last fall. And, you know, I'm going to sh just share. So you graduated last fall. Joy Ludwig graduated a year ago. Is that true? Or Yeah, Joy? in December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in December, a year ago. And then Mackenzie, I feel like you, you know, just graduated last week. Is that true? December, but yes, last week. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I just wanted to kind of share some of their work as we kind of get into this dialogue. Um, the uh, This is the work, I guess, are you seeing me share my screen here? Mm -hmm. This is the work of Mackenzie Smith, who, I, you know, we've looked at your book in class, Mackenzie. Um, the, uh, it's always been unique, and it's always been this interesting blend of uh, I guess fashion and beauty and kind of, you know, fine art, I think. Um, how would you describe your work, Ken? Exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Yes, no. it's everything. There's no like specific genre, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would say. And I think that's also common for students when they're graduating too, to be kind of, you know, within different kind of, you know, genres. Then we have the beautiful thought provoking work of Dora. And Dora, I describe you as a fine artist. How do you describe yourself? Yeah, I always say fine artist. <laughs> you know, and Dora's work has been like kind of consistent and consistently thought provoking. Yeah, I think throughout your entire, you know, ex you know, history as a student at AAU, you know, like, you know, and I am curious, did you, you have an undergrad degree, but not from the academy, correct? Right. Was it in art or what was it in? No, actually, uh, I, uh, that was back in China. Um, mm -hmm. I graduated as a um, literature <laughs> degree. And then I came to U.S. and I worked as a software engineer for about 15 years. Oh, you did tell us that yeah. story once. Right. Yeah. No, that is a wonderful story. Uh, no, that's a, that is a wonderful story. And, you know, then we also have the work of Joy Ludwig. And man, how do you describe Joy's work? Um, you know, Joy always had a million things going on, I thought. And there was always a photo shoot. And there was always a big production. And there was always a big production pulled off at the last minute with some kind of, you know, like, hopefully someone won't care if I show up with this giant taxidermized, you know, giraffe <laughs> at a 7-Eleven. And we just snuck in and did it, you know. And, you know, her, her work beyond being kind of, production heavy was also just beautiful. I thought, you know, like the simple work was beautiful as well. Um, like that just was always struck me as just a really beautiful, simple photograph, you know? Um, and so, you know, uh, this is, was a great kind of trio of artists to put together. Um, and I'm just thankful that we all uh, are able to um, say hello. And so, you know, for this, uh, the students will all have questions, certainly, but I do want to um, just kind of go around and in your own words, kind of catch us up with what you've been up to. And we'll just kind of take turns. Why don't we start with um, Breezy Photo Studio Lightroom, which is uh, Mackenzie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm currently at work. This is my lunch break, so I'm just using their computer. Um, yeah, so I am now working at Stitch Fix at the Atlanta headquarter, or the Atlanta studio, rather. Their headquarters is in San Francisco, um, and I was trying to work at the San Francisco studio, and then when they opened this one, I was like, this is perfect. So wow. I, am, I started as a digital tech here, and then I'm doing color specialist now, so matching garments to the photographs and then sending them to headquarters and then continuing on down the line. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's fascinating. The, we'll ask you more questions about that um, in a bit, but we'll just kind of introduce everyone. Now, the other question I have, though, is, Mackenzie, is this your first job after graduating or? Um, um, this, I'm technically freelance here, but this is my first, like, consistent job. I've done a ton of freelance jobs while in Atlanta, but this is like my first study thing. Right, right. And it looks like there's a flash going on behind you. Yes, there's four different sets going on, or no, five different sets going on this week, so. Oh, wow. 
they're shooting them out. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's fascinating. Uh, and then let's shift to Dora. Um, Dora, catch us up on what you are up to. We all know you had a big exhibition um, uh, very, very recently, but why don't you just catch us up on where you are and what you're up to. Where the lower pots are inside one of the pots. Yeah, um, actually my, <laughs> uh, the experience I'm having right now is that I work as an individual artist since I graduate. Uh, and this is also what I'm looking for. You know, I, I want to be um, working individually and I want to be, you know, um, work on my own pace, you know, um, and I plan, of course, you know, the exhibition is the biggest thing for me this year. And I prepare for the show. And right now I'm kind of busy with uh, schedules, like someone call me in the morning, like, can we go, you know, as a group or can you give us a tour or something like that? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So tell everyone what this exhibition is and when it opened and you, you, like give us the basics for those who don't know. Okay. Actually, um, about two years ago, I, uh, I got two of my uh, pieces work got um, accepted for a show. And, uh, and then one piece was... Um, awarded as uh, best of the show. And then a few, like few weeks after the, uh, actually it's a Triton Museum of Art. And then they sent me an email asking me whether you're interested to have a solo exhibition. That was, wow. you know, like end of uh, 2019, right? I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, that's something beyond I was looking for, yeah. yeah. But then uh, the exhibition was uh, postponed uh, like year and a half. <laughs> oh right? yeah. And um, this year finally, um, you know, uh, everything's on the wall. And uh, also the director was uh, super nice and uh, he allowed me to have, a, um, you know, more than, I want to um, exhibit, you know, oh, wow. so give me a whole room. Like the gallery is about uh, 2000 square feet. And uh, that's, that was exhibiting for uh, the portrait series. And also the hallway, you know, um, they said, okay, you can take it <laughs> if you want to exhibit more. So oh, I have nice. my landscape. Uh, it's a small series, but yeah, right. so grateful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. And we're happy for you. And uh, no, it's a, that's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. The uh, Joy, catch us up on where you are and what you're up to. It's good to see so many of your faces, Cameron and Michael. And hey, and Nikki, I saw you too. And I saw somebody else in there. I saw uh, Jordan. Oh, yes. you heard Jordan. Yeah, I heard Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Um, after graduation, things got really crazy here. I uh, started working on film sets because that's also something I've always kind of done in the background for the last several years. Um, and then I started managing a prop house for television and commercials, and um. I, had, I was a client here renting things while I was doing my senior year. So I was renting props from this location and then they ended up needing a manager. So just that continual like coming into this shop and you know talking to the people um, just got me connected in that way. And then I was doing freelance at the same time. And then I built um, a small studio space to rent out on Gigster called Yellow Room. So they've I've been working in all three at the same time, <laughs> manage the prop house. My yellow room is in the prop house. So I rent a space inside there. And mm -hmm. then um, part of my agreement of managing the prop house is that I can also do my film sets. So I can do my photography when I have clients and I can do my film sets when I get hired on to um, films. So I'm doing all of them. <laughs> That's fascinating. So, I mean, you are essentially, 
Yeah, you're a freelance artist. You don't have a mm-hmm. job, right? Well, I have not a job with the photography, just freelance with the photography, but full time with the, the managing the prop house. Oh, you are. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you know, that's fascinating. And so, you know, that kind of well, I'll kind of circle back to that. But I do remember that when you were a student, you had a connection with this prop house. Is that yeah. true? Yes. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, there is a discussion and uh, maybe we should get into it right now. In like, I have a theory that in the beginning of your career, the power of in-person meetings is more important than ever. And that in the beginning of your career, you're able to have more of them too, because a lot of these connections are your first connections and someone wants to really meet you and they're not totally willing to just connect with you because of a website or something. And so I'm wondering, and for all of you, and we'll go back to Mackenzie and start there, is what was the, what do you see, Mackenzie, is the power of in-person relationships versus, say, using LinkedIn at this first year that, you know, you were uh, finding work and trying to make connections? Yeah, I think I personally had to use LinkedIn and use my resources that way because I was in San Francisco, graduated, went back to Georgia, where I grew up. And my parents live in like the middle of nowhere. So I was commuting two, three hours, 4 a.m., 6 a.m. to Atlanta to do work. Um, And that was great. But using LinkedIn, I was trying to get to California. I was trying to get across the country, like trying to do those things and make those connections happen again. Um, But I would get through round three, round four of these phone interviews and they're like sorry we're just we're not ready to relocate we're just going to go with our intern who we've been working with in person for the past six months and we're going to train them so that happened to me three or four times with like pretty big commercial companies that I was so excited for Mm. and then I was like well I guess being in person really matters so for me I was debating do I fly across the country with no money no prospects nowhere to live and just be like I'm here I can do it or try to find something in Atlanta. So for me personally, it made more sense to stay here with my family and everything. And I just commuted to Atlanta and made those personal connections. And um, yeah, I, Stitch Mix was kind of random. I didn't know anyone. It was a LinkedIn job thing that I applied to, did a Zoom interview. They said, I'll get back to you. And like, it took three, four months for them to get back to me. And then I thought it was oh, wow. when I got the email, I was like, is this a scam? There's no way this is, you know, like, there's no way they have this in Atlanta. Yeah. Like, what the heck? And so my first day coming in, they were laughing at me. Like, we promise it's not a scam. So, yeah. Um, so I, don't, I feel like this was one of those fluke. Every other job on LinkedIn I applied to, it was like non-existent. Never heard back. Wasn't really helpful except for this one, which is like super rare, but most of my freelance gigs, most of my things that I've done in person have continued those connections and continue working with each other. And similar to Joy, I worked on film sets and commercial photo sets in Atlanta. And they just tend to hire the same people if they know that they like you and want to work with you again, they just keep you on for the next one, so. Oh, for sure. For sure. What was your goal upon graduating, though? Like, what was it to to move to San Francisco or Los Angeles? Or what was the goal? So, yeah, prior to COVID, my now fiance, we wanted to move to Los Angeles together because he's in film and he went to Scott Atlanta. So we were going to go West Coast, L.A., do the thing. And then when COVID happened, he had already graduated. So he was working as a PA in the film industry here. And so he was getting work in Atlanta. So I was like, well, I'll just come back to Atlanta and try to get back over there, try to get a job that'll bring me over there. Yeah. But honestly, it's been kind of working out here um, with this opportunity. So, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, I do have a theory, like there was a point where Los Angeles and New York were the only places photographers could launch careers. And I don't think that's the case anymore, you know, and like now more than ever. And, you know, there, I, I do feel you, there's a variety of places you can live and, you know, create good work that has an impact and be part of a commercial, you know, industry and all of those things. That was a good story, though, Mackenzie. 
The um, So Dora, your path fascinates me the most because a lot of times we think that people who have commercial careers, eh, they kind of know what they're going to do. Like I want to assist or I want to get like an entry level job at, at like a studio or something or some e-commerce thing. But the path of an artist is much more obscure, you know? And I am wondering like the... How how are you making connections or how, how are you working as an artist at this point? Like, are you meeting people? Are you sending sending out, you know, <laughs> invitations to your show or what 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 are you doing? Yeah, I think uh, uh, while you're talking about, um, you know, the connections, that's something I'm really um having trouble with actually uh especially these days you know uh connect with people in person is something not that easy as before yeah yeah and also um i think uh, right now <laughs> working as an individual artist i think the biggest thing for me is that um uh, i don't have an agent i don't have a dealer um I don't have a partner. <laughs> Almost everything I have to deal with by myself. Um, yeah, but um, as many people told me, you have to find your community before you know um, you graduate. But I actually I didn't um, do much before I graduate. But early this year, I thought you know that's something I have to dig it out. And uh, I joined so many uh, communities. And I think at first a few months, I feel like I was totally overwhelmed. You know, I um, joined so many meetings and, um, and then I realized I have to uh, figure out which one works for me the best, or I have to prioritize you know, uh, what's important for me? Like, uh, do I need to meet more people or do I need to um, get inspired by the community? Yeah, and um, what else? And um, build up a relationship with other, uh, either artists or the curators, something, you know, um, really made me, <laughs> thinking about it for like for a while you know I'm still in the early stage I would say oh yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, even I got this show I mean the exhibition I there are so many things I learned from um mistakes mm. yeah mm. Mm -hmm. the you know I guess the one question I would ask you is like I think of um, the artist path is being a bit more isolating than say like Mackenzie is part of, you know, there's other people walking around in that room over there and there's people popping flashes and, you know, it seems it's like, it's a bit more, you're, you're engaged in the world. And I do wonder like, what are the steps you've made to keep from being just too isolated? me or for no for you yeah um, for you like or or do you like that you know what I mean is that a positive for you because everyone is different yeah for me I'm not a very outgoing person honestly mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, sometimes I feel like I have to uh, I have to do something I have to advertise myself you know that that's my weakness um, still but um, I'm trying, I'm trying to do a little bit more. You know, sometimes uh, I got an appointment with my friend, you know, I really enjoy the time and, you know, she's also an artist. One time we, we, we schedule a, a point with, appointment with her. And then um, early in the morning, I got another email say, uh, Dora, I want to meet you today. And, you know, I, 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 I was totally lost. I, I didn't even look at her name. 
and uh, Google who she is, you know, I, I just immediately replied, I said, you know what, I have an appointment <laughs> this morning. Um, and, and then when I back home, I realized, oh my gosh, I lose the connection, you know, she's someone. <laughs> yeah, so that thing happened. Um, <laughs> oh, your nature is to I, say, no, I'd rather be by myself or something like that. And then, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to force yourself to make those connections. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can relate to that for sure, because right. not everybody is an extrovert. Not everybody is willing to say, like, hire me, give me a show. Um, yeah, we have to find ways that it works for us, really. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Joy, how are you reaching people or how did you, I mean, to me, it seems like your ball started rolling when you were still a student. I think that's true. I think the teams I started building when I was um, doing, you know, just like TFP with groups of hair and makeup teams that we all kind of grew at the same time and they're all working in the industry as well. And so if I still want someone, I have like two or three makeup and hair teams. So I always have someone now to call. I'm like, Hey, I got this going on. They're like, yep, of course, of course. And, um, to have those multiple teams, one team is not enough. It's they're going to be busy. If they're good, they're going to be busy and they're going to be booked. So yeah. you, you need multiple teams. And now that I have multiple teams, sometimes those teams have now met each other and they work together. So it's not just about, you know, bringing up my own brand and my own thing. It's seeing other people grow at the same time. So you're able to support your community that way too. But um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I think, well, I had started it and I had yeah. said, it seemed to me like you started kind of making these connections. Like your situation was different than Mackenzie's who suddenly was like, oh, it looks like I'm in Atlanta now. You know, you yeah. had the momentum. Uh, yeah, because I, I was here and I was shooting because of COVID, though, all because I came back from San Francisco. So right. that was um, interesting. I got got a head start on that kind of thing, I guess. Somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. So I think some of the big initial steering of the question, though, was like, you know, like Mackenzie was essentially saying, look, using LinkedIn went nowhere for me as a way to like make connections. And then it did deliver me a job. And I'm yeah. wondering what is the power of personal connections in what you're doing versus electronic connections? Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm super glad it worked out for Mackenzie. <laughs> um, everybody that I've worked with is all word of mouth so far. Mm -hmm. So this, I just got, hired to do um, production design on a feature film, my first feature for production design. So all the skills that I've used building sets for myself and creating worlds, I'm using those skills to pay the bills a different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And all those, I didn't even submit a resume. It was just word of mouth. Like they didn't even ask to see anything yet. It was just, oh, I know that person. So I'm gonna take them for their word. And that's pretty much all my jobs in film this year have been that. And in photography, now that's starting to pick up as well. So yeah. it's all been people I've met face to face or they know someone that I have worked with. So that's been super interesting to me this year as well. It's not like I submitted for all these things. It was just, oh, you know that person. No, that's fascinating. Well, what is the power of these personal connections? Is it your skill set? Is it likability? Is it maturity? You know, like what is the, what do you think is the thing that allows these things to work? I think it's all of those things to a point, but it's also communication. So many people are bad at communicating. You can't answer your email in a timely manner. They're going to find somebody else because they need to fill it. Like yeah. they need their product done, they need their shot done, they need whatever done. Like if you don't communicate to to them, then they're gonna move on to somebody else. Um, and being flexible, you know. Oh, can you do this? Can you do that? Oh, maybe you don't like doing that, but can you do it and get paid to do it? Okay, I'll do it. And then they'll hire you something else that you like more next time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't love to create those things. I want to do this, but can I do that? Yeah, I can do it. And it right. might get me to the next thing I want to do. Yeah. 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 
No, I think that's common. And I know like myself with the like stylists and stuff that I hire, I'd rather have the one I know and like try to do something and get close than <laughs> yeah. meet someone new and then try to be like, do I like them? Oh, I didn't like them, but they were supposedly excellent, you know? Right. And so, and it's harder. It's harder that way. Yeah. Someone that can flow with you and how you process things and how you work with things. Those people want to stay with you for a long time. Yeah. 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 It's more natural. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that was a good, that was an excellent point. The, um, I want to get back to trying to have you all paint a picture for what you did, like, as soon as you graduate, like, and we're going to steer this to Mackenzie. So, okay, Mackenzie, you graduate, and then, like, you party for a day or two or something, and, and, and then what? You know what I mean? Like, because I am a big believer that the structure of school is something that Kind of encourages creativity. You're surrounded by creatives. You have deadlines to meet. You have a lot of demands on your time. You're busy, but then you know you have to produce. And I have seen a lot of contemporaries of myself when they got out of college suddenly were like, "Well, I don't have. I don't. I'm, you know, what's my motivation right now? I don't know how to move forward." And I'm not just saying our. Uh, occupationally, I mean, just creatively, occupationally, always, because, you know, in talking about your first year out, I don't want it to only be about like, my job, I want it to be about your life as an artist as well, you know, yeah. um, how did you structure your time? Or how did you move forward? I'm going to be really honest, it was yeah. very hard for me. Um, the day of graduation, it was on zoom. And I remember just like crying, because I was like, this is it. Like, yeah, this is what my whole career has led up to and my senior portfolio book was um, a combination of all the work i had done in college so it was really cool for me to see it all in one place so that was kind of an interesting like metaphor of like this is everything i've done in one place and like now i can kind of walk away like i'm not i wasn't continuing a project i wasn't like making something new during covid and during that the last semester of school for me so it was kind of like okay let's get graduation's over. My creative stuff is like, I'm putting a cap on it. I had to get out of San Francisco, sell all my things, like get back to um, Georgia. And at that time, both my parents actually had COVID. So I actually had to go oh. to my boyfriend at the time's house. Yep. So that stuck. I didn't see my parents for like a month after I got home. And then, yeah, personally, it was just like a really weird time. I did it. I felt like I was going to go back to San Francisco. I was going to go back to school. Like it wasn't actually over. Like it didn't ever feel like it ended. Um, but I had no creative, like I didn't want to be creative at all. I just wanted to be home. I wanted to like breathe after all of that. Um, but I also had this pressure to make money, get a job. And like this pressure I put on myself, like, oh, I need to go to LA. I need to be this next big photographer. If I'm not, I, I failed. I didn't achieve my college dream, you know? So I kind of put that on myself for the next six months and would get it, I would have an interview and then it would say no. And then I'd have an interview and then say no. So I just kept going up and down emotionally and that just took a toll on my creative process. Like I still, for me, creativity was college, was San Francisco. Like I got to go crazy. Like that was it, that was everything. And then I would come home for a week at a time and I would have family time. So now that I'm back home, I'm like, it's family time. Like, it doesn't feel like I want to be creative. Oh, Especially yeah. I was at my mom's house at the time. Like, that was just, you don't want to, like, have a photo shoot in your mom's living room, you know. So that was just an interesting time where I was evaluating myself and, like, processing everything. Um, and I actually decided, you know, it's time for me to move on into my own apartment, saved up money from all my freelance gigs and moved to a different city. So it felt like a new space. It was still in Georgia, um, close enough to Atlanta. And then things kind of fell into place from there. But I honestly am still having a really hard time finding that creativity and finding like it's a whole new group of people. And thankfully, a lot of the people who work here work freelance and love collaborating. And, you know, there's, I know a lot of people now from this job to do creative stuff, but yeah, it's been honestly really tough. And I definitely think COVID plays a huge part of it, but it's also the reality of going from college and you have everything at your disposal and then coming home and you're like, 
oh, like I went to college to do something and now I'm back where I started. So that it was really hard for me and I'm still building, like I have a couple C stands now and I have a R5 and I'm like, okay, I'm getting back into it and trying to get the inspiration. But yeah, I'm just, for me, this was a big deal. Like I want to be stable. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be freelance forever. It like really makes me anxious. And so it's, I'm getting there. I'm gradually like feeling like, all right, this is where I want to go. But yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> You know, that's very honest. And it does remind me, yeah, like I remember like when I was in college, I was the artist, I thought in my head. And then when I came home, I'm like sitting at my parents kitchen table eating a chocolate chip cookie or something like that. And being like, I don't really feel like that radical artist anymore. You know what I mean? Um, And so no, that yeah, figuring out how to be who you were, but in a new place is a thing, you know? Um, You know, and I would ask you this, do you feel that you know, like at school, you had to make photographs. Now, do you feel like your, you know, non-working time is more about building a life? Yes. I mean, right now I'm planning a wedding. So that's kind of like taking over the time. And I'm also trying to catch up on sleep. So I think I just kind of get drained. I'm not, I don't have a huge social battery. I get kind of drained at work. And so... I tend to just be like resetting myself, resting, and then preparing for the next thing. So I have to plan creative time and like time to like be that artist person because otherwise I just get lost and I'm like, "Ah." no, well stated. Yeah. Well stated for sure. Um, Dora, let's kind of shift over to you. So upon graduating, I'm so sorry, I have to go. Oh, sure. Awkwardly leave and the camera is going to follow me. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, we'll watch that. Yeah, the high-tech AI replacing all photographers. Um, I'm so sorry, bye. So good to see you guys. All right, great to see you, Mackenzie. Thank you. Uh, For me, actually, um, first of all, I think I wish I had this conversation before I graduate. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Uh, same here, actually. Um, I had a trouble with, you know, uh, time management. I know what I'm going to know to, to do before I even graduate, right? But then uh, I definitely not as uh, productive as I was before. Um, and as I touched a little bit before, you know, earlier. Um, I joined so many communities, like first uh, few months of this year, and which kept me busy, but it doesn't mean, um, you know, I was really uh, involved or I was not really uh, inspired to the point I was looking for. And uh, oftentimes like, I feel like my calendar is full with meetings and then end of day I um, kind of ask myself hey what did you learn today you know it it seems like you're busy but you you didn't really um, got so much from it and um, and also I have to deal with all kinds of things like you know I set up my office and my dark room um, I need to purchase, um, you know, equipment. And that took me a lot of energy. And uh, I lose the interest, like, um, like I was in school, I can, um, you know, stay in the dark room for a few days. Um, so I'm, this day is that I think I'm kind of getting back a little bit. Um, which, uh, you know, I expect probably next year won't be the same as this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also like, like Timothy, you mentioned that um, the good thing about the school is that um, it set, set up a timeline for students. Oh, and, deadlines, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Working as an individual, artist and I, I kind of I I do give up um, you know give 
myself a timeline sometimes, but sometimes, you know, um, the thing is, for, for instance, I work um, <clears throat> like a historical process. Mm -hmm. And once I run into some issues, I kind of uh, doubt whether I'm doing the right thing and I don't have anyone give me feedback timely. So I kind of give up, you know, for a few weeks. And then after a few weeks, you probably lose the momentum to keep going. So that's the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds very accurate. Right. Yeah. At school, you had peers and you had people who were going to answer your questions and kind of right, get you right. to that next level. Yeah. And then even though you are not getting to the point, but you, you, you're confident, like, okay, I can do it. But once you work on your own, you know, you kind of lose that confidence. No, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, has it forced you to make different decisions? Yes. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. But, but I still, you know, I feel like, okay, probably I need to spend more time. You know, um, I often uh, you know, tell myself like, Okay, Darius, you can do it, but you probably need to work on you, you, you need more time to research or you know, um, yeah, so allow myself a little bit more uh, <laughs> more patient. <laughs> oh yeah, no, be more forgiving to yourself. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. The um you know, it's interesting as we go through, I feel like the question changes when it's in everybody's hands. And now we're here at, with Joy and I'm like, did we ask you this question already? But the upon you graduating, uh, yeah, what exactly went on? You were in Atlanta. I was, yeah. I partied for like three weeks. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I just tried to do some things that I really wanted to do that I couldn't do in school time-wise. But then I had... Um, a film lined up and then during the film I actually got hired to work here as soon as the film was over so March mm -hmm. 1st I think um I started working at the prop house which the prop house is not the biggest prop house in Atlanta but it's like a character prop house and we specialize in retro and vintage things so working at the prop house got me the connections to all kinds of people in Georgia and help me familiarize myself with who is who in Georgia mm -hmm. and Atlanta so I could start to figure out where I was in the world, you know, like a new place, yeah. like who, 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 who should I be working with? Who should I not be working with? Yeah. Um, but after graduation, I would say, you know, like the other ladies, it was a huge roller coaster. You have like super highs where I'm doing it myself. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 like here I am. <laughs> and then you're like, oh my gosh, here I am doing it myself. <laughs> and, and like, can I do it? Do I trust my gut instinct? Do I keep listening to other people? And I think, I think reflecting on this last year, since it's almost been a year is I need to listen to my gut. I need to do what makes me happy. I need to experiment and try different things because it's not the box you thought it was going to be. There's more freedom than that. And that's okay. Like, it's actually very exciting if you embrace it. Maybe you're not doing a photo shoot this week. Maybe you're using your other skills like digital tech or production design. Everyone does production design for themselves when they're a photographer. But yeah. You can use those skills to do other things and tell stories for other people as well. And you're still learning and you're still making connections and you're making money too at the same time. So it might not be exactly. And then I've become like choosier with my own shoots. So my shoots take a lot more, a lot longer to plan now. So between my other working jobs that are still in the art world, I can choose like, I want to do a shoot like this, but it's going to take me three or four months to find all the people for it. So I kind of like that flexibility. I don't have to produce at someone else's pace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. You know, it's interesting. So we had, and we had a guest, we did one of these symposiums another semester and Lucien Liu, who is another fine artist. Do you guys know Lucien? 
Yes. Uh, Dora probably does. Um, the uh, I think he's a really great artist, and he said a curious thing. He said, like he was almost one of these guys who was good at everything. Like he could he could kind of make commercially looking images if he wanted to, but he was really steered towards art. And I remember he said, I. I don't want to be a full-time artist. He's like, I want a job. He's like, I can do administrative things for an arts organization. I can try to teach a class to high school kids. Like I want a normal job. And then my art can be made when I want to make it. He's like, if I was given one, some type of lottery <laughs> where suddenly I was an art superstar and I had to make art all the time, he's like, I, I wouldn't really want that. I want some job where I can talk to people about art and make other connections with art. And, and, and that is what he's doing. And it was the first time, and it was almost liberating for me to hear him kind of say like, no, I don't want to, I, I don't want to get paid to be an artist. Like I, it, it, that would skew it for me. And then if I was to predict his future, I think that is his future. I think he probably will, you know, be a successful artist, but you know, and I'm wondering, and, the, and I'll save Dora for after just to ask joy right now, what role is being a photographer? Is that still your top goal? Is it to be a commercial photographer or is it to make your own personal work and support yourself in other ways? Or, you know, what, what's the what's the hierarchy of needs for you? I think I'm still figuring that out. Like, yeah. how badly do I want this thing? And when you've had that, is that is the thing you have to have. Like Mackenzie was saying, you put all this pressure on yourself that it needs to look like this. I wanted to go to LA too, but COVID happened. Yeah. And um, now it's like, what other things can I do but still be true to myself. So like, I still love photography and I still do photography, but I can only do it the way I want to do it. I don't mm -hmm. want to do it for someone else and produce things that I'm not passionate about. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at doing things I'm not passionate about. So I like the structure of the job that still has me in the art world. I can still take the gigs I want to with photography. If I don't want to, I say no. Yeah. And saying no, I think is really important sometimes so oh yeah 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 no I think like yeah no no I would say and Dora do you have any thoughts on that like the is your job to be a fine artist right now <laughs> I think I'm more agree with joy <laughs> I only do the things I enjoy doing it I'm a passion about it yeah so um once I got inspired I will keep doing it uh, otherwise, it, it's, it is hard. But on the other hand, you know, I'm not um, make living <laughs> with my art. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I cannot even break even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but that, that's something else. I mean, marketing is really something I need to work on, though. <laughs> mm. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I mean, do you want to just be an artist or do you want to do something else and then just do your art in the way you want it? I think but, art, making art or um, the process of uh, creativity is make me happy. You know, that's something made me happy. So, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, um, my husband seems okay with that so. mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 that makes sense for sure for yeah. sure I think it's the important to also set a time like after school I was I had so many ideas but I needed to really get them out of my head and I really need to learn to set time aside for just myself to plan because if you don't plan it it's not going to happen obviously we all know that but now I've set aside time where I go away for a weekend, like to an Airbnb or whatever. And I am a left alone and I can get all my thoughts out and all my brainstorming out and put together mood boards and all of that stuff for myself, not for anybody else, for myself, yeah. because getting hired to do the shots I want to, you know, my work happens when I spend time dedicated to it. So mm -hmm. if you don't dedicate yourself to it. You're not going to get hired to do those shots either. That was just something that I always thought was important this last oh, year. For sure, for sure. Um, 
So upon graduating, like, did you join any organizations or anything, Joy, that like, you know, that suddenly allowed you to become part of the community and meet people? Or is it you already were kind of working on those connections? Yeah, I didn't join anything. I just most of my time is spent on an Instagram world and that's a lot of my connections are through Instagram um, and building repertoire, finding out, you know, who's in Atlanta, who's in Georgia, who's close to Georgia. You know, a lot of people are close to Georgia um, and just making connections that way. So what do you mean by connections? Do you mean like reaching out to people and saying, I want to work with you via Instagram or <laughs> Yeah, just simple like, hey, I love your work. Follow them for a while, you know, the usual stock method. Just stalk them for a while, like them. Say, hey, I've been following your stuff and I really admire some of the stuff you do and I'd love to collaborate with you or plan something. And um, just getting your name out there. Mm -hmm. It'd be really aggressive. Like you gotta be really aggressive, not in a pushy, bad way, but like if you want people to know who you are and you wanna work with people, you can't just wait for them to ring your doorbell or email you or text you. So, um, yeah, that's super, super priority. So you make yourself known to these people, you get into their consciousness, then how do you seal the deal? You know, um, I usually will come up with a concept that I already saw. And that's the reason I'm following them is I saw something that I, clearly you know i put together a mood board and i'm like hey i got this idea i have a location in mind do you like this like is this in your line of you know um do you have a vision for this and then um a lot of that i do with actors because actors are always looking for new content and actors are super great models because they can emote a lot more than sometimes just your regular fashion model not that fashion right. models don't but they have something else to draw on. So working with actors can do a lot for editorial photographers. And I'm always just there humming at the, you know, whatever. And then I'm working with this actor right now named John Wincher, who was on Cobra Kai and Unrighteous Gems. And, you know, he he's someone, he's not way up here, but he's someone. And now we're working on writing a short together. So it's, you just, start working just start your way in wherever oh, one thing leads to another leads to another like so put your webs everywhere hope mm -hmm. something catches <laughs> so what i like and what i'm grabbing onto what you just said is you're not saying you're just like like hey dm me for a collab you're you're being proactive almost the equivalent of a photographer pitching a story to a magazine essentially yeah. saying like I found this and it reminds me of your work. And I'm wondering if you want to work together on this. Yeah, be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Not, it doesn't have to be so fine tuned because you want to leave a little breath for them to be like, oh, and maybe we could do this. And you'd be like, okay, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but be prepared and just, I think people that when you come into the conversation and they don't know you and you're like, hey, here's my work, here's what I'd like to do with you, you already have a plan they have to, to step into. And it makes it much easier for them to say yes. I like that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Them already. Yeah. So that is that is a, a very proactive use of social media, I would say. You know, the Dora, does pro does social media play any role in, in what you are up to? Uh, I would say yes because I learned a lot of uh, people's experience and also like uh, Facebook, you know, they share their, um, you know, the process of mm -hmm. um, creating images. Uh, that's something good about it. And I do, you know, um, connect with some people uh, through Facebook and also um, Instagram, I have some connections, but not many, you know, uh, through Instagram. They saw my images and uh, DM me like, you know, I really love your um, work and ask for pricing. So, um, yeah. So oh, they were interested in purchasing an image, right, right. purchasing a print. Right. Oh, that's great. No, that's wonderful. The, you know, it's interesting. We went, uh, to the students, you know, one of our 
one of our exercises in this class was what would you do if you had an unlimited budget to promote yourself? And a number of the students said um, they would hire someone to do their social media. And, you know, what they essentially said is like, look, I know I'm bad at it and I know how important it is. So I'd want to hire someone to do it. And I'm wondering how did, how do both of you, you know, why don't you think a little bit about like, do you think you're good at it or did it come naturally to you? Or is it just like using the yellow pages to you or, you know, like is, would you ever hire someone to you do your social media or do you really feel it's a personal thing? And uh, let's go back to Dora on that. Oh, <clears throat> I I'm really bad <laughs> on that. Probably Joy, can you go first? <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> um, that's a really good, I like doing it because I want it to be me. Yeah. And if people know me, they know that I love people and they know that I'm there to support other artists and to help everyone elevate themselves. So I like it being me. I understand the time it takes is the biggest draw. The time mm -hmm. is the biggest problem because I want to spend that time building other concepts or meeting people or um having a meeting with someone so we can come up with something else so that's the hardest part is time but i still like it being me gotta be you is what, yeah. what you're it essentially really, saying i'm the brand of me yeah so i just don't feel like someone else is going to be able to and that'd be great if i was pr proven wrong like <laughs> it would be great but sure. i don't know if that would work yeah yeah no that makes sense any thoughts on that, Dora? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there, 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 there are many things I can talk, but, but I'm, I, I am very honest. I'm really bad on that. Mm -hmm. I got so many emails uh, through my website. Uh, they, they told me that I'm not doing a good job and <laughs> they can do it more professionally. Oh, right. Um, you know, are you interested? I consider that's all spam. <laughs> oh, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but on the other hand, I, I really know I need to work on it. And um, <clears throat> actually early this year, I had um, a portfolio review and I uh, purposely chose one reviewer as a um, like sales agent. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what they are looking for. And I want to know how to deal with that. So um, actually, as you know, it's only like 20 minutes uh, right. review, right? So, uh, and he's the first one I met with. <laughs> And um, actually, I didn't know what I should expect from this conversation. I shared my work and he seemed very interested. And he said, you know what, Dora, I really love your work. And uh, I want to promote your work. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and he said, please email me your pricing, everything. You know, I, I did at the same day but then <laughs> no email back, <laughs> nothing, you know, just, uh, um, I don't know what I did wrong, honestly. Um, and my price definitely is not high at all. <laughs> right. And um, well, that's my experience. Uh, probably, you know, um, uh, talking about the current exhibition, and I met a, a person at the the you know the reception day, and he's asking the price as well. Like Dora, tell me how much is it? <laughs> Very direct. <laughs> and um, I said, you know what? Can we exchange an email after this? You know, that's wise. Um, but. Yeah. Yeah, and then he asked me, do you have a agent or you have a dealer? I said, no, you know, I just give you the prize from uh, artist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's I'm still interesting. in a very 
uh, <laughs> early stage as a um, artist. Yeah, I'm still learning. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, for <laughs> sure. Well, those things happen even to veteran artists, too. The ghosting, you know, is, you know, happens everywhere. You know, here is a question, and this can be the last one until we open up questions to the students. And the students have been, you know, kind of preparing some questions, probably some, some of which have been answered or have not been answered. But there was a topic that came up in the class where I asked the students to try to think about a the situation in which they're most comfortable sharing their work. And what I what we kind of meant by that was like, I think some of the students had said that, well, they're kind of insecure in the idea of trying to make an appointment with someone and be like, here is my work, hire me. It, you know, they, they were wary of and they felt that maybe there was a certain confidence they were missing or a false confidence they were missing. And you know, I, I remember myself, I was kind of saying, like, I always hated to kind of show my portfolio, like in New York City and just be like, I'm here, please hire this loser photographer, you know, but if I could come in, because like they saw people do that all day, but if I could come in and share something I was excited about, like a personal project, I, I was in a, conf, a, a place of confidence and I felt like it could be like, I think this is cool. I think you'll think this is cool. Let's look at this. And it was a different dynamic than like, please hire me. I'm poor, you know, or whatever, whatever it is. And so I'm wondering if either of you have thought of like, are there situations you feel that you're, you're very comfortable sharing your work and connecting with someone who may hire you? Joy? You know, honestly, over a meal is helpful or, really? yeah, or over like a very quiet, intimate, like coffee shop or something where you can actually talk and hear each other and get to know the person a little bit. Yeah. If you can relate to them a little bit, it breaks that wall down where they feel like you're this big artist and they can't, they don't, they don't know art. They don't know how to make art. They don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so they are coming to you because they need your advice and your guidance. So just being relatable to your client in some way and finding a quick connection somehow is super helpful to navigate into the conversation of, okay, now let me share myself with you. Right. Yeah, and this is what I'm working on. Maybe this is something I'm working on right now and I haven't released it on my website yet and showing them like that stuff where you're really yeah. pumped up and it's fresh in yeah. your head. So you really want to get it out there and always having that. I've learned to hold images longer so I don't just release them to everybody and I can keep those and give them to certain people. Oh yeah, this is this is something I'm working on but it's not out yet. They like to be teased along like that sometimes and know like they're they're on the in, you know. Right, yeah. right, right. That's good. That's good. Uh, Dora, did that? Um, did, is there any point of connection there you could make? Um, <clears throat> I think uh, most of the time when I have a show or you know either it's a group show or like the solo show. Um, when people ask me about the work, I would love to share. You know, I, I feel like I'm confident. Yeah. Uh, you know, last time, you know, last week actually, I had a group of people and I know one person in that group. Yeah. Before we're going, and yeah, she asked me, Dora, can you um, <clears throat> talk about each of your work and entertain us? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, that word kind of, you know, struck me as there's something I need to um, more entertaining, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, that made me uh, feel more relaxed and also, you know. <laughs> oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think being honest about that insecurity and showing work, I think is, 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 is valid, you know, like, because I do think it changes the dynamic, you know, um, of any meeting, really, you know. Um, so, you know, all of this was wonderful. Why don't we open this up for questions and see what the students have to say? The, um, oh, let's see, Cameron, do you have any questions? You want to start this off? <laughs> You're the only one with your camera on, so I figured I had to. Um, Casey is getting a snack, I think. 
I don't think I have a question. I just think, you know, I hear Joy say that she holds images. Makes me feel better about not putting out my stuff immediately. It's yours. You don't have to. Yeah, I know. I think we, we get into this uh, this habit of just being like, I just did this. I got to put it out. Produce, 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 produce. Yeah. Yeah. So, because like, there's something I've been working on. I did a shoot in January of this year. And I'm just like taking my time editing it because I like I did four like 70 style shoots in a vintage home. And it's like, I just want to make sure it's right. Yep. And then I also want to put it out to the right people. I don't want to just put it out and just sits there and lives on Instagram. So hearing that definitely made me feel a lot better. <laughs> yes, totally. And sometimes there's going to be a lag in your work where you're not producing something at the moment and you're going to pull that card out of your back pocket and be like, and they'll be like, whoa, what is this? Where'd this come from? Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be great timing when you know it's right. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, that's good. The uh, And then Cameron is thinking of relocating, correct? Yes. Yeah. Any, any advice, Joy, to, to Cameron in terms of like, what do you do when you're suddenly in a new place? Where do you want to go? Uh, well, I'm actually moving down to LA because I'm okay. just bringing a lot of work down there. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to keep traveling every month. Right, right. So, so then you're starting to make connections now. Yeah, but yeah. I can I can see that, you know, it's getting more and more like, or less consistent. Okay. So I'm just like, okay, how can I meet new people to make new opportunities and yeah. so on and so forth? You mean, you need to meet a lot of different people. It's not just meeting one group of people either. It's meeting all kinds of different people that can bring you into that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, now that I had this connection to a prop house, which I never saw that as a thing, like I didn't dream to <laughs> think, and like, what is a prop house? You know, before living in Phoenix, before I moved here, you know, we didn't have prop houses out there, but um, getting to know those people, those people know like everybody, like, everyone's their client and once you get like a relationship with some of them for things maybe you want in your photo shoots or and I know you film as well so mm -hmm. um like connect to those people and see what they have because sometimes they they connect with jobs too got it yeah I'll make that at the top of my list the prop houses <laughs> <laughs> it's well, a different know, avenue or yeah or the rent like there is a place in uh in emeryville california here that uh dtc rental that rents to the film industry okay. and at, you know the crew there are people who i've hired as my assistants oh, and really? then they've gone into styling and yeah because i got to know them yeah. from renting from them and so i know their personality and i know their problem solving skills and stuff yeah right so if there's a big production then and i know i need some guy who's going to be able to you know rig this thing up that's the guy and I can talk to him and it's not like a new person that I got to be like, are you the guy, you know, like, so those, those kind of relationships, like I'm a big believer in though, having a community of photographers who can answer questions for you is key. But then I also feel that knowing those others in the world and being able to connect with them can help solve problems for you as well. Yeah, you know? totally. They're your backup. Yeah. 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 The um, that was good, Cameron. Um, Michael, you just sent me some questions. You want to uh, uh, introduce them yourself? Michael Chan, you might be taking a break. Um, I see it, I see it written up there. Yeah, let's wait for him to come back and uh, and check it out. KC, do you have any questions? There we go. Had to unmute. Morning, Joy. How are you doing? Hey, Casey. <laughs> Good to see you. Me too. Um, Casey has a, what do you guys think of the eye patch as a branding? Should he lean into that? <laughs> it fits well, Casey. <laughs> I think it would, probably, it would probably fit well into, in, into Joy's um, <laughs> neck of the woods with the actors and whatnot. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I think, does anybody watch The Walking Dead or watch The Walking Dead at all? I'm watching it right now. I never watched it when it came out. Have you gotten up to the governor yet? Yes, I'm season yeah. six right now. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what my daughter's been calling me is the governor. The governor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I think, Joy, you and I, for the most part, have stayed in contact 
mm -hmm. back and forth over all this, but I think I'm more fascinated with what you do in the fact that where you are, I had no idea there was such a, I hate to say the word, I don't know, like a high demand for what it is you're doing there. That is there, is there an acting guild out there? What, what's out there that draws all these people in? It's awesome. Uh, film incentives. Um, first is Georgia's film incentives are huge. So you have all the big studios. It's just, I don't think the world thinks of Georgia. I think they do now more than they did five years ago, but the world of Georgia is the other Atlanta. So we have all these big film people come in from California that are funding, but all the crew is making money here because they're crewing up here. Sometimes they bring in crew, of course, to from LA to Atlanta or even New York. But the film incentives in Georgia are so good right now still um, that they come to use what we have. So everyone scrambles and now like, can you do this? Yeah, I can do that. And I'm on the way and I'm YouTubing. Yep, okay, I can do that. <laughs> you know, and if I haven't learned it or if I don't know someone that can teach me, then I'm gonna teach yeah. myself because I'm not gonna miss out on the opportunity just because it's like one simple thing I can't figure out or haven't done before. Um, yeah, it's just very, a, a lot of different people um, you know, you have Marvel, you have Disney, you have <laughs> Netflix, you have Showtime, you have HBO, you have, um, all the big players and they all have a studio. So they need photography. They need film. Yeah. I had, I had no idea that that was such a huge industry out there and, and seeing your work and seeing what you do and listening to what you say makes me want to pack up and move out there and dive into <laughs> that. It, it, you look like you're having a blast, which makes me happy because I know what you were doing before you graduated so i mean yeah. see, the yellow room is amazing by the way one Thank day you. i'd love to get out there and use that thing it's yours anybody can come <laughs> out I, I want to have more locations though. that's my next goal is to i have this location but i want to build other spaces because gigster isn't as big as it is in california but i think gigster has a really cool thing going and i would love to really harness that for atlanta and be in on that you know creating spaces for other creatives and what how was that thing you just said Dick, Dickster? Nick, what's Dickster. That? Gigster. It's like pair that? space that you can rent a space. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Um, created or not, it could just be a blank room. Oh yeah. We use peer space a lot in what yeah. I do. Um I, I was unfamiliar with Gigster. Yeah, Gigster is a good one. And how is that room working for you with that? Um, it's starting to get going now. Uh, the first month was really slow, but once um I did all the initial photo shoots that I released as part of the marketing. And then other people started to pick up on it and people that come into the prop house um, see it and they're like, what is this? And since I'm here most of the time, I'm able to introduce them to it or give them a link to the space. And um, yeah, I would just, I have a storage unit now full of stuff that I want to build another <laughs> set with and oh I that's great kind of, yeah so I just collect I keep collecting if I use it myself or if I rent it to somebody else or I'm just trying a lot of different avenues I think at the same time because it's not you have all these skills and they're, and they're photography you know film related but you can use them across so many things just don't close things off to yourself yeah no that's excellent excellent philosophy the um no it's good jordan are uh, you still there Hi, jordan. yes i'm here and i think my video oh i think my video is working now You're there um here i am um they want to I, see you jordan thank you it's good to see everyone um i actually like literally all of my questions were just answered because like I was about to ask about the yellow room. I was going to ask about what you do besides assisting. What has like working in the prop house helped? Like those are all my questions and you answered all of them. Um, I guess one question that I do have that um, wasn't answered was like, who are you getting your work in front of? Like what kinds of people are you putting your work in front of and like trying to get your name out in front of? I feel like I've been building so much this year that I haven't focused so much on who I'm getting my work out in front of necessarily. Mm -hmm. I've been building for myself different streams of income. Yeah. The studio is one group and one culture of people and working on film sets is a whole different kind of group of people. But what happens is producers see your website and they see, oh, she does photography. Oh, she does film too. Okay. And then they see that she has different skills. Yeah. Right? So yeah. 
like you're able to do different things. Cause I know I've seen your work. Your work is amazing. And you, you create worlds. You could use those same skills to do production design for somebody. Yeah. Like it's not hard at all. I'm not, I yeah. mean, it's very hard, but it's not hard. You already have it going. Um, so I've been, I feel like I've not been pushing so much the photography so hard. It's more like I'm building and building and building for fruition in the coming years. Yeah. I do personal yeah. stuff, but not as much because I'm working on the other stuff. Yeah. And, and is, is, that how, all. is that how you meet people by doing other things? You're like, yes. oh, okay. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Because you, you burn out and you don't have time to do, you can't just do everything. I wish I did. I could, but um, I you get close to everything. I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> you, you're close to doing everything. <laughs> okay. That's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was like all, my, literally all my other questions were answered. So, yeah, cool. You know, Morgan, do you have any questions? Yeah, I do. So, like Jordan, like most of them have been answered, but um, I do have a question that I guess um, can, like goes to like both of you in a sense of asking how you separate the pleasure in making your work from the business side of it, because sometimes it can be a very fine line. Like when it's like, especially when you're trying to get your work like shown and like prices get like when there's like numbers of pricing and all of that, like, how do you really separate those two sides? Dora, you should do this. <laughs> You're probably better. <laughs> I can be very stressful when people talk about talk about the numbers uh, because, um, <laughs> as you can imagine, you know sometimes the press uh, won't go as the way you are expecting, and. Um, um, sometimes, you know, I talk to my husband, can you do this? I, I can no longer, you know, uh, deal with this anymore. You know, um, definitely you probably um, want to have someone to help you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think uh, pricing and deal with, uh, especially a uh, company, you know, as you are just, the single one but you are dealing with a company you know like uh, last week i had a um i had a purchase from a company and then they have so much um you know like agreements you know <laughs> legal yeah. issues you know have to look at every line every words to see if they're <laughs> they're I wouldn't say it's a trap, but, but you definitely have to look at carefully about everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do have another question for you, Dora, about likes, because I'm more of like a fine artist as well. And so, and I, under, like, it can be really challenging, like creatively. So I'm wondering, like, what do you do? Like when you feel like you have like a creative block? I do. I do have that often. <laughs> I think I uh, uh, always get inspired. That's very, very important. Um, not uh, photography per se, but almost everything. You know, um, I go out with friends or, you know, by myself, either uh, to a park or a museum or shop or something, you know, um, that can inspire me, you know, like either the color, the form, you know, um, uh, recently uh, me and my husband got a puppy, you know, <laughs> that inspired me <laughs> at some point too, <laughs> right? Chaos. <laughs> yeah. Total chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, he tows around, my puppy tows around all the stuff in the floor. And all of a sudden, you know, I look at the floor. I say, oh, this is amazing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> right. Interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, those are good questions for sure. Yeah. Um, the no, that was good, Morgan. Uh, do you have anything else, Morgan? Um, I'm looking at like some other questions I've written down, like in the past for like um, different interviews, and but you guys kind of like already like said it all in a sense. Because like I guess my biggest question was like the representative part, because like in my mind I feel like it's so it it is so hard to do it all yourself. Somehow Joy is doing it. I don't know how. <laughs> spinning plates. I'm spinning plates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both of you, like, I can't, like, right now I feel like I'm juggling and I'm, like, still in school. Like, I'm trying, you know. Um, so, yeah, like, have you guys looked into any of that? I think we briefly talked about it before. Looked into what specifically? Like, getting an agent or representative. I haven't really had time to think about that. I would like to think about that <laughs> um not really anything pursued after graduation um but i'd be totally open to something like that mm -hmm. yeah a lot of artists here don't have reps and there are some that do but um i think that's a challenging thing too because you have to find someone that represents you the way you want to be yeah, exactly. I was talking to an artist not too long ago because I did an interview and they basically said the same thing of like, you need to find someone who truly does match your energy, who like can represent you, you know, yeah. um, like a vessel in a sense. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's important to stay humble as an artist and not think that we're beyond anything or with anything because with that becomes some, um, hindrances in, in art and in who you might connect with because you might be connecting with someone that it doesn't have your skill set yet today but in a few weeks something happened and someone grew at something and now they're really good at something else and just remembering like we all started somewhere and we're all continuing to learn no matter what mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no that is a good point the it's I, it's almost like i feel like, I, I mean, I myself in, in the world of commercial photography, there is that question out there if that if that model of the commercial photography rep is is is, you know, becoming less and less important these days. People are doing these things themselves. But I do think in Dora's case, having someone who could represent her, you know, a gallery that could represent her work and could price it accordingly and get it in front of collectors and all of those things that are much harder to do. Um, and harder to know how to reach, uh, that probably would be the key next step, I would say. But I do feel that like in kind of the commercial photography world, the, 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 it's a little easier to access the people and figure out who you need to get your work in front of is what I, I tend to think, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, just one one thought on that whole thing, you know. The uh, Natalie, did you have any any uh, questions? Um, may I like they answer almost the other questions I had, but maybe just one um, that came to my mind was like I heard the last guys that people like join contests to like to be like another way to promote like to get your work out there. So maybe yeah. ask. It would be good to do like contests once in a while to so to see to promote kind of like your work. I haven't joined a contest for like two or three years. <laughs> I'll, I'm totally honest about it. I hate contests, so, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not probably the person to answer that. <laughs> well, no, I think you answered it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Dora, do you see any value in this in contests? Yeah, definitely, especially for fine artists. I think, yeah, I, I, um, you know, uh, constantly remind myself to um, join contests. Yeah, like uh, I think I've ever um, <clears throat> had a seminar about. Uh, how to approach to uh, you know the the um, fine art world, and then um, 
they suggested to have at least a one each month. Um, at least uh, at oh, the wow. third, yeah, at the uh, you know first uh, five years of your career. Oh, one contest a month for the yeah. first five years of your mm -hmm. career. Right. You know, it, it is funny. There is a mixed. You know, like I used to have this belief that there are so many contests preying on photographers just to take their money. You know, contests you've never heard of before. And then I talked to a marketing person. They said, "Well, for young photographers, it gives them something to talk about, where they can say, like, look, I won the something something and the something something, and you know, it gives you something to share on social media. And commercially, I'm, um, um, I." I I don't know if there's an answer. I think it depends on how you handle it. But in the art world, I kind of see that because I can see in the art world that feeling where you're kind of like, oh, I've seen this before and I and I know this is great. You know what I mean? And like, oh, I think I saw this in this other contest. And I do think there is advice I used to get is that you should make it seem like you're everywhere, you know, and within the art world, I could see that being that too, where you can kind of feel like, oh, I think. People are writing about this and talking about it. Let me give it a little more consideration, you know, and it could kind of give you some traction in that world. Mm -hmm. That's great to know the differences though, right? Like Dora, you have all this advice about that and I can see that in your fine art stuff. That would be really great. Yeah, 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 yeah. To have both. Yeah, no, no, for sure. <laughs> the, um, so, you know, I just want to check in with all my students here. Um, let's see, we got Nikki, we got Dominic, and then I want to read Michael's uh, question. And then if anyone else has a question, we have Boris Bowen and Christopher Bingham here. If you guys have anything you want to bring up, you know, feel free to bring it up. Um, uh, Dominic, did you have anything? Sure. Um, um, most of my questions are answered, but... Um... In addition to that, um, so I worked quite a few, uh, quite a, for a long time in in a studio, and I and I saw my photo director sharing a lot of opinions when open with the um, editor, like magazine ed editor, when shooting like artwork and choosing for the magazine, and whose author authority is more powerful, and uh, is is it important to build a a good sense of a relationship with the editor and the fellow um, staff of the magazine? Mm, I'm a little confused. What is that question again? It's like, um, is it is it really important to uh, build a good sense of a relationship with the editor and okay. and their fellow staff because uh, sure. there there might be a some time uh, someone someone might shoot for a magazine or uh, someone will rel relate to that I think that's a hard one because magazines are based all over the United States. And in order to like really meet those people in person, you'd have to be in the same city as those people. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't really had that experience for myself is to get to know like a staff of a magazine or something like that, where I would be able to build that kind of um, connection. So that's, and those staff are usually pretty small. So there's not a lot of people to prey on. <laughs> 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 so um that would be trickier but I, it definitely could be an avenue if you can find out who those people are maybe um mm -hmm. and start following them like on their socials so they can start to see who you are um it's like a back door but it's worth a try yeah my director he's just keep talking about it like hmm. he's building I don't, I don't know if it's a building a relationship, but he kept talking with the, uh, he, he was kept talking with the um, like staff, all the members. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, I, I didn't know that was an uh, important thing, but it seems, it seems an important thing. So. Yeah. But I just want to, uh, I just want curious about it. Hmm. All right. 
And then, um, you know, and Dominic, you're in Korea, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so that eh, could be, you know, the editorial market could be different there. And, yeah. you know, because, um, yeah, in America, it seems like it's really about the work, you know, mm -hmm. where photo editor wants something shot in Atlanta. Let's see who's there. Um, That's true. The more you work for those places, you can build some type of like phone or email relationships with them, um, you know, and occasionally meet them. But yeah, it's more about the work. I think. Yeah. But yeah, maybe different where you are. The uh, Nikki, did you have anything? All literally every single one of my questions was answered. <laughs> um, All my um, questions are answered. Um, yeah. um, but I just think it's amazing that Joy is taking on so much and succeeding in everything like it's just really great to see to see you doing it so Thank you. i don't know about succeeding at a high rate you're putting it all out there and you're starting something you're starting something from scratch in some ways and you're just building it you just continue to keep building it and nobody can build it but you so nobody can do the work for you and you have to continue to figure out how you want to keep doing it so it's not easy it's not easy at all, <laughs> but it's how bad do you want it to be successful and how bad do you want to grow the way you want it to grow? Do you think you'll ever get to the point where you'll need to hire an assistant? I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do have a lot of people here that will come and assist on, on different things and like, that's great, but I would love to be able to have like a whole staff. <laughs> You know, to, here's my interpretation of what Joy is doing, which I do, I do think is healthy. And correct me if I'm right, if I'm wrong, Joy, is that idea that a lot of times if you have many things happening, well, one's not working out, then there's something else that can be cultivated. Or, oh, one is booming. Well, okay, let's ignore this one for a while and dig into the one that's booming. But if that thing starts to, to slump, <laughs> well, then, then there's this other thing. And because I used to think that because I, you know, like as a commercial photographer, there would be periods where you were hitting it out of the park with a magazine. They were hiring you all the time. And then suddenly they stopped. And if they, and if they if that was all you had going, then you were dead, you know. And so but if you have multiple things moving, then eh, it kind of allowed things to kind of give and, you know, have an ebb and flow to them. Definitely. And you're experimenting. A lot of it's an experiment. How is the yellow room working? Is the yellow room not working? What do people want? What do people not want? It, you can't think of everything as in complete failures. If it fails, cool. But what did I learn from it? How can I move on from it? I only spent so much money building it. It's not like I bought a house yet, which is yeah. the goal, right? Yeah. To buy yeah. the house and then put that on Gigster. That's what I really want to do like in the next two years um, and build out sets in each of those, which I get to shoot in first and then I give it to everybody else. Right. So not how we think of failure, even though it can be like so cliche in some ways, like if it fails, okay. So what? <laughs> yeah. Let yeah. it go, move on. Something else will help happen, make it happen. Right, right, right. So no, that's good. That's good. And when you got a lot of balls in the air, something can fail and you're not like, you're not ruined by it. You're more just like, oh, okay, that didn't work. Now let's read, okay. you know, steer yeah. our attention. So Michael had a question here. Um, and um, that was interesting. Yeah, they got uh, kind of answered um, early on, though. Well, yeah. Have you ever gotten bored with the subsect of the subsect of the industry that you're in? Now, that was interesting. Um, what do you mean by that necessarily, Michael? Um, like, you know, just feeling kind of like a burnout or something, maybe just because you're turning like something that was personal into a full time career path. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Absolutely. I quit shooting for like a month or two, which is a, you know, a bit. And I felt like I wanted to walk away from everything because I was just so saturated deep into all the different things I was doing. I'm like, how am I going to do this? Like, how am I going to make this happen? And I had to realize that certain things happen in their own time and it's okay to just not shoot for a while mm. and do other stuff that makes you happy. Cause I'm right. passionate about it. But if you burn yourself out, like, you know, it's, you're going to burn yourself out. So you have to be careful to recover from that. And what did I do wrong? What did, you know, reflect on like, how can I not do that again? Or just accept that you are and don't fight it. You're burnt out. Okay. You're burnt out. 
let it, you know, just let it be what it is and, and um, find something else for a while that makes you or helps you still be creative. And you'll find your path back to doing the photography that you like to do. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Accepting that burnout happens instead of fighting that it's there. You know, you broke your leg. Okay, it'll heal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. <laughs> yeah, you're not finished. You're no, just you're not. <laughs> yeah. You might actually learn your biggest lesson from that burnout. Like right. you might get your biggest inspiration on the other side of the burnout. Like it's just right there. And sometimes that's what happens. You're so burnt out. You come up with new ideas. <laughs> oh, I like that. No, we should get that. We Students write that down. You are so burned out that you will then come up with new ideas. <laughs> um, no, that was good. You know, uh, we should, final. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> The, um, we should let you both go. I want to thank you both and uh, Mackenzie as well. I mean, your maturity and insights and kind of philosophy that came through today was super, super valuable. Thank you for sharing that. You know, um, no, that was wonderful. Wonderful. And it was great to see your faces again. Uh, I feel like uh, you never left, really. So All right. thank uh, you for having us. Yeah, Dora and Joy, you can take off my class. Let's take a 15 minute break and then come back and uh check in. Okay. All right. Hi Joy. Right. Bye. Take care, everyone. Take care. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.